this is only so many hours in a day, but with all the, the technology, our blog, uh, the Department of Websites, uh, the reorganisation of the department, which I think should be noted, uh, to give a greater focus to the uh, digital economy, economy area. Uh, we're very keen for all of that input to keep coming in through yourself, my office, uh, the department, uh, any way that people can. Mm. Well, thank you for that. I think it's, um, obviously, I think it's a really important opportunity, particularly with the prospects of the NBN. I know there's a great deal of interest with people preparing for a high bandwidth environment and really wanting to, to optimise um, what it means. Um, can I ask the department, perhaps, or yourself, Minister, to outline how you just mentioned restructuring the department to put a greater emphasis on it. Can I, can I get you to just to outline that briefly and, um, and give details about who the contact point or where the contact point would be within that area of the department for these ideas? Sure, Senator. Um, as um, uh, earlier in the hearings, the Secretary and I indicated the, the department's re being reorganised into three broad program groups, um, one of which is, uh, is a group um, identified as the Digital Economy and Services Group, um, which, is, which is establishes two divisions um, that will focus on essentially the services delivered over um, communications networks, which, which in this day and age is, is increasingly being fundamentally over broadband networks. Um, that group will focus not only on some of the broad um, and high-level policy issues associated with um, the evolving digital economy, but also administers and, and delivers a range of program initiatives designed to uh, facilitate access to, uh, to broadband services and, and facilitate more innovative use of, of those services. And in fact, there's been discussions of some of those programs like the ABG uh, Digital Regions Initiative and NICTA um, during the course of the hearings this morning. Um, that that reorganisation does bring together um, uh, the, the range of, of uh, parts of the department that deal with directly with, with the, the, the service, service layer of, uh, of, of a converged world, that is, and that, which essentially is the, the digital economy. Um, in terms of the future directions document, um, uh, my division uh, has primary responsibility for, for driving that process, and, and Mia Garlic is the um, assistant secretary who will, who will, as of Monday, be heading up our digital economy and convergence strategy branch. And uh, both myself and, uh, and Mia are probably the most appropriate starting points for people who wish to contact us on, on those sorts of issues. Um, look, thank you very much for that. I think that's um, very helpful and I'll um, be taking up that offer. Can I move on to a couple of um, other brief issues in, in 1.2 uh, before I conclude? One of them is um, re relating to a, a TIO uh, program. Uh, I think it was called Connect Resolve. Um, the Connect Resolve campaign. Um, I just wanted to ask about that, um, what it involved, what its status is. Thank you. Mr Besgrove. Um, thank you, uh, Senator uh, Keith Besgrove, First Assistant Secretary, Telecommunications, Network Regulation and Australia Post uh, Division. Uh, the, uh, the Telecommunications Industry Om Ombudsman is an industry-funded body which uh, investigates uh, complaints uh, raised against uh, carriers uh, by uh, communications consumers throughout Australia. Uh, the way in which the TIO is funded is uh, entirely a function of the volume of those complaints. And uh, the, uh, the TIO has become increasingly concerned over the last couple of years that uh, uh, it found itself growing because the number of complaints were in fact growing quite substantially. Uh, both um, the volume of uh, individual complaints and, and the range of issues that uh, consumers were raising when they, when they did uh, make those complaints. And I should add that uh, complaints which uh, go to the TIO are very frequently those that, uh, where consumers have not been able to uh, uh, get uh, satisfaction from the carriers in the first instance. Uh, the TIO is what is known as the elevated complaints uh, uh, organization for for these purposes uh, the TIO decided to embark upon a, an, a, a more ambitious uh, 
awareness raising and, and publicising campaign called Connect Resolve, which it uh, uh, launched last year. Uh, the Minister um, uh, participated in, in, in the launch of that campaign. Uh, it runs uh, over the remainder uh, uh, of, uh, of the financial year, so it, it's, it's getting close to its uh, initial conclusion. Um, the purpose of the Connect Resolve um, campaign is to increase both consumer awareness of um, the sorts of recourses which they may have if they have concerns in relation to their, uh, uh, their carrier's uh, performance. But more importantly, it's deliberately designed to engage with uh, senior management uh, of, the, uh, of the carriers throughout Australia. Uh, and it, I think it is fair to say that uh, a combination of um, the efforts of the TIO combined with a number of public pronouncements which the Minister has made uh, uh, along with, uh, with other uh, interactions which uh, the Minister and the Department have had with the, the industry have certainly caught their attention. Uh, and it is certainly the case that uh, the carriers are now adopting a range of measures to deliberately try and train their frontline staff. Um, certainly we have examples uh, from several of the carriers of quite explicit training initiatives uh, to uh, try and enable uh, frontline staff in a number of the carriers to be able to resolve complaints by customers much more quickly. Um, secondly, we have a number of uh, undertakings from the, uh, the CEOs of some of the carriers indicating quite clearly to the Minister that they are in fact actively <coughs> engaged in responding to these issues. So we are, I guess, guardedly optimistic that this, is, uh, this might be getting somewhere. Mm. But thank you for that. I think it's um, important to understand. So how do people who want to be part of Connect resolve or have a connection complaint that they haven't got resolved? Is that that's just a question of using the TIO website and the normal processes to contact? The TIO website is a good place to start, but what the TIO will usually uh, ask is, have you first spoken to your sure. carrier? Because uh, and you know, if, if the carriers were here, they would say that they already deal with a very large volume of complaints which never go beyond them because yeah. are, they are able to resolve those. Um, the TIO is really there to investigate and, uh, and seek solutions to more complex or more intractable uh, problems. The concern which the Department has had is that despite that, the volume of complaints going to the TIO has been increasing year after year. Um, I've referred a couple of times to the mobile premium services yes. uh, issue. Uh, that was a good example where um, it, it received much more attention over the last 18 months in part because of the very significant spike in complaints. So at one point the TIA were feeling <coughs> about 3,000 complaints a month. Mr. Um, Madam Chair, I'm sorry to interrupt, but it, it is after 2.15 on the yeah, second no, no, day. We I'm haven't touched to the end. I just wanted to place one more question on notice. I'm okay. very conscious of the time, Senator Thank Minchin. You. I did say I would only take about 15 minutes. Could, <coughs> could you take on notice um, providing information about TIO complaints relating to pair gain systems. I still get complaints about people who can't access ADSL services because of the existence of pair gain systems and their trouble having that resolved. So I'm interested to follow that up okay. from the TIO's C perspective. Certainly, Senator. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. There being no further questions in relation to Program 1.2, I'd like to thank those officers for their assistance and I now call